The Legend of Zelda has its fair share of cool dungeons, items, and villains, which make it a memorable series. But without the cutscenes and the story development, these features would not mean nearly as much as they do. So today we're taking a look at my top 10 favorite Zelda cutscenes. All cutscenes are fair game, from an item get all the way to the credits. Granted, the longer cutscenes have an advantage due to more content, but the shorter cutscenes have been known to send a powerful message with very little going on. Never underestimate the rule of less is more. Finally, after getting the parts of the Song of the Hero, combining them, going through the Skyloft Silent Realm, and assembling the pieces of the Triforce in the Skykeep, the long path of Skyward Sword is complete. With the eradication of Demise and the Isle of the Goddess returned to the surface, your primary goal has been accomplished. What you've worked so hard for since the beginning of the game has finally been achieved. Zelda's seal will be broken, and it's time for her to wake up and get back to life as it was before. As Zelda awakens from her deep sleep, she experiences a warm welcome from Link and Granny, and some hefty comic relief from Bruce. All is as it should be, with smiles and laughter. Peace has been returned to what would one day become Hyrule. This scene is a very heartwarming, happy ending to your journey. Where all you BAM! Out of nowhere, a tenacious Gearham strikes and throws everybody to the ground. The world is no longer safe. Prepare your anus. The misdirection that the scene throws at you is simply amazing. When I first played this game, I was so immersed in the dialogue that I totally forgot about Geary. And I thought I was done the game. For one of my favorite Zelda villains to return in the stylistic way only Geary can do, makes this cutscene really stand out.
After introducing the Helmrock King's face to the floor, courtesy of your big ass skull hammer, you decide, why stop here? We have more shit to wreck up. In this second encounter with Ganon, you have the Master Sword and his pet bird is now a Thanksgiving dish. With nowhere else to run, you have this red-headed punk cornered and it's kick a ginger day. This cutscene is an amazing emotional roller coaster ride of highs and lows. Excellent storytelling. This event is where the Wind Waker story expands from an island boy rescuing his sister to holy shit the world is in danger and ancient relics and legends are at play. Things just got interesting in this action packed scene. The fact that many previous characters in the game make an appearance in this scene shows that Link's efforts early on to help others come back around to help him out when he is in need. It makes it feel like what you've accomplished beforehand is less of a random obstacle and is actually beneficial to your quest. This scene is a breath of fresh air when it comes to the dragons. After several unpleasant interactions with the snobby water dragon and the very forgettable fire dragon, it's nice to see a dragon with some charisma. Sure, you have to bring him back from the dead, but it's well worth your efforts. I always crack up when I see Link reach into his pouch and pull out this massive fruit that he couldn't possibly fit in there. And the sick thunder dragon's eyes just light up because he knows exactly what Link holds can cure him from his devastating illness. Top it all off with the charming statements of zing and ding ding, and down the hatch, I can't help but smile. This scene is also very relatable if you've ever recovered from a sickness. You feel very grateful and energized after, just like the thunder dragon did. Excitingly flying around and eager to sing his part of the song of the hero. It's nice for a change to see a dragon proud to help you out, after all the others just make you prove your worth first. Bonus points for kind of resembling Santa Claus too.
This is a very pivotal moment in Twilight Princess. You're still learning about being the chosen hero, how the Twilight works, and just what in the hell is going on all around you. Everything seems so far out of reach, and the odds are seemingly stacked so far against you it's unreal. But an epic jousting duel with King Baldwin on the Bridge of Elden, followed by an emotional reassurance from Colin that what you're doing is actually making a difference, and that your courage and bravery is rubbing off on him, making him stronger, is enough to send a surge of confidence down your spine and propel you to take the next area. big for this. Because of you, my spirit is finally free. Can't thank you enough. I feel like I should apologize. I was doing all I could to protect Hyrule when that thing got the best of me. Sorry that me resting with the rubble caused such a mess. The good news is, Ruthania is now back under our control. That means that our century-old Ganon beatdown plan can finally go into effect. I'm gonna take this down the mountain. I'll have a better shot at Ganon there. And then, once you've made your way into Hyrule Castle, we're gonna light that thing up. I wanna give you something. It's a special power of mine called Daruk's Protection. It's no good to me now that I'm a spirit, but it might be useful for you. Here it comes! From this moment forth, the power of protection from the depths of my soul now lives inside you. Good luck, little guy. And give my regards to the princess. Let me set the stage for you people. Throughout Breath of the Wild, I got thrown around and destroyed by every single enemy in the game. From the scariest Lionel, all the way down to the most dangerous of all, the dreaded electric keys. Even the Blight Ganons are insanely strong. And it seemed no matter how strong and overpowered I got with the champion's abilities, I still felt like I had no chance against Calamity Ganon. Even with the Divine Beasts on my side, Ganon was built up to be this unfathomable force, and I certainly believed it. Cut to Varudania, the 
last divine beast I conquered, and yet I still felt this way. But who knew that the booming voice of support from Daru was the confidence booster I needed? And the sight of him at the very end where he's standing atop Rudonia with a victorious fist in the air, while Yanobu looks on to see the legendary Goron hero with his very own eyes, is the biggest beacon of hope that anyone could behold. That was the moment for me that pumped me up to take on Calamity Ganon, and realized that I actually had a chance. Well, that ought to do it. We're set here. Now we just gotta wait for the perfect shot. Once Link is in the castle, Rutania will unleash an epic blast. Ganon won't know what hit him. Hyrule looks pretty good from up here. Even after a hundred years. The old rolling grounds sure are a sight for sore eyes. I wonder how the Gorons fared after the Great Calamity. I sure hope everyone down there is still going strong after every... Huh? Hey, look at that! Still going strong indeed! Ha!